Hello and welcome to another podcast episode. I'm Ray, first of all with the weather report. It's meant to be up to 34 today. I don't know whether that's going to happen here. At the moment, where are we? It's uh, coming up to midday and it's about 25, 24, 25. So another 10 degrees, I'm not sure. Of course, we are on the coast here, which does make it a little bit cooler. Middle daughter lives over the other side of the South Downs, north of the Downs. They always get a lot more sunshine there, a lot more heat. And of course, in the winter, a lot more snow. You know, the grandchildren will contact us and say, we've got nearly a foot. Well, they don't say a foot. What is it they say? They say, I don't know. We've got whatever centimetres of snow. <laughs> and I just say, all right, that's good. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Had they said like eight inches, a foot, whatever, I'd know how deep the snow is. And they say, what do you think, Granddad? What do you think? Well, we haven't got any snow here at all. And in the summer... Oh, the temperature here is dreadful. We've got an absolute heat wave. Isn't it awful? And I say, well, it's quite cool here. We've got a sea breeze. Anyway, enough of the weather. Nice to hear from John. Hello, John. Talking about this uh, this episode, the communications episode. Uh, I, I'm not going to say <laughs> too much, John. I'm going to get you into trouble. But women, yes, if you want something uh, spread round, tell a woman. Why is it, I've often wondered this, why is it that some people are called, you know, some men are called, oh, he's an old woman. Why is it an old, that's detrimental to old women, isn't it? Elderly women. Oh, he's an old woman. <laughs> I know one or two old women, male old women. If you know, I'm not getting into transgender, what, I don't know what it's called. No, I don't mean that. I don't mean men identifying as old women. I mean men that are men, but act and behave like old women. Now that's a little bit... Uh, rude isn't it really to older women I don't know why is it anyway perhaps someone will answer that yeah as I say I know one or two men that are old women they really are though have you noticed do you know anyone any male people or, or females uh, male I'm talking about male basically because people I've worked with have normally been male some people I've worked with early 20s you know when I was in my early 20s that's a while ago they were old men then when they're sort of 23 they were old men. They behaved and acted like old men. Obviously, they didn't look like it at that age. But I do know one or two people mentioning no names that, honestly, they were, they've always been old men. I don't know any women like that because the women I met, well, no, we were going to the girls I met when I was young. <laughs> we'll give that one a break for a while. So this is all about communication. Old oh, Brent from America Hello, Brent. Just nice to hear from you. Hello, Brent. Nice to hear from you. Uh, this was about politics, wasn't it? Yeah, we were discussing uh, via email. I was saying that here, politics... I don't know whether you've ever watched PMQs, Prime Minister's Question Time, midday on a Wednesday. That's UK time. What is it? British summer time or something. Have a look at that. You can probably watch it all around the world on some platform or other. It really has become a farce. Honestly, it's just like a, Trish calls it a farmyard. Oh, you're watching the farmyard because all you hear is... It just sounds like a farmyard full of animals. <laughs> it really is. And the name calling and mud slinging, I don't know, it's, it's embarrassing. I find it embarrassing. So uh, Brent was saying more or less they got the same thing in the in the USA which is a shame. Right, what am I on to now? Where's my notes? In a mess, as usual. Just briefly going back to the episode about politics. Thanks for all your emails. Uh, they really have been piling in. Hang on, it's an aeroplane going overhead. Come out of Shoreham Airport. Uh, as I've always said, bit of sunshine. Everyone rushes over to the airport and gets into their little planes. There was a biplane yesterday that came over. Really nice. There are a few of the old biplanes around still. Nice to see. And we sometimes have a Spitfire. It goes along the coast here. And you can tell the sound of the Merlin engine. Fantastic. They come out of Goodwood. When we're on the Isle of Wight, in fact, what they do, they come out of Goodwood, fly around the Isle of Wight and then wherever and go back. And they take passengers. You know, you can pay. I think we looked it up. I think it's an hour, just under £4,000 or something, which is great because all right, it's a lot of money, but there we are. A lot of people do have a lot of money. We're not all broke like me. We're not all poverty stricken like me <laughs> here at my non-technical recording studio. It's nice that people do pay for these flights because it keeps the Spitfire going. 
I dread to think what the maintenance costs are and there must be insurance. The fuel costs, everything must cost a fortune, so it's really good. Anyway, that's another issue. What was I talking about? Oh yes, that's right, all the emails about the uh, politics episode. Yeah, it seems to be the general consensus is, from what I gather, sifting through all the emails. I put them into two parts. Well, I did it on screen. I put them into two sort of folders. Those that are fed up with politics and those that are, uh, as who is it, um, Brent put it, obsessed with politics. I used to be obsessed. I used to follow politics all the time. It was really good, really interesting. But these days it's just, well, it's a joke. It does seem the majority of people... Uh, roughly sort of 85, 90% of people are absolutely fed up with the whole thing. This is in the, the UK mainly. Here we go, news flash. What we got now? Oh, weather alert. It's going to be, uh, what is it, heat level three today. I think the Met Office, they've got this scale. One is warm, two is hot, three is very hot, and four is kind of, the. I think that's the top one. Level four is dangerously hot. So heat level three today. Look, look, more news flashes. Here we go. Oh, that's just about... Oh, that's about politics. Oh, I'll ignore that. So, yes, politics. It does seem that most people are fed up with it. I listen to some of these uh, radio shows. Well, I don't bother too much these days. But the ones I do listen to, all the callers seem to be fed up with it. Oh, I've had enough. I've had enough of this. Don't watch PMQs anymore. Don't follow the news. So I think perhaps the government ought to take notice and realise that most people are fed up with everything. <laughs> That's enough about politics. Let's talk about communication. Now, we'll start off by going back to my childhood in the 1950s. By communication, I mean not only talking to each other, for example, on the telephone, but news, getting news in your newspaper, news over the radio, or all forms of communication. How we would get news in the old days, for example, Something happens in, I don't know, the centre of Africa. What we had to do. Have you heard of Pathé News? P-A-T-H-E, is it Pathé? The news people in Africa would, would film whatever the event was, whatever the issue was. Then that reel of film had to get back to London, which obviously was uh, quite a journey. It then had to be developed. It then had to be distributed around the cinemas in the early days before television and people would go to the cinema to watch the newsreel. What a difference. If something happens in the middle of some country these days, within seconds it's on your iPhone. It's on my watch. News alert coming up. So what a difference. We know within seconds. It's fantastic, really. But, uh, yeah, communication is all forms of communication. Now, back in the 50s, the majority of people didn't even have a telephone. Can you imagine that? Any youngsters listening? Can you imagine that? Let alone a mobile phone. You haven't got that. You haven't even got a landline at home. What do you, <laughs> what do, you do? What do you do? Well, people chatted. That's what they did. They chatted over the garden fence. I think that's where this old woman thing comes from, basically, because housewives... Now, I've got to be careful here because I get arrested. <laughs> housewives, because they were called housewives. Then. You're not allowed to call them that now. They're What are they... Technical something or other. Technical house looking after people. Something like that. But anyway, people used to have a chat over the garden. Oh, hello, Mrs. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Now, that was a record, wasn't it? How's your Bert's Lumbaker? Oh, mustn't grumble. That was, um, was it Lazy Sunday? Was it the Kinks? Lazy Sunday afternoon. How's your Bert's Lumbago? Mustn't grumble. But that was it. Women used to chat over the feds. I expect men did as well. But uh, that, I think that's where it's probably come from. But that was a form of communication and a very important form because the lady would come back into the house. When the chap got home from work, her husband got home from work, she would tell him not only the local gossip, but perhaps items of news. There's a, a new building going up down the road or there's a, a shop closing, whatever. So news travelled basically, by word of mouth, local news anyway. Also, news uh, bulletins on the radio, news broadcasts then, were something else to gossip about. The chaps would gossip about it in the pub. You know, did you hear on the BBC Home Service news this evening, this is happening or that's happening in whatever country? And again, word would get round that way. So communication 
really it was only the radio and word of mouth because the majority of people in the 50s didn't have a television or a telephone, as I've said. Even in the 60s, not everyone had a phone or a television. I know people, I remember in the 60s, that didn't have a telly. All they had was the radio, and the only news programme on the radio was the BBC Home Service. There weren't all these other 24-hour talk radio things, talk stations, news stations, you know, where we just get it all rammed down our throats these days. And uh, allegedly, I have to say that, allegedly half of it's all biased and wrong anyway. So that's how it was news-wise. News would travel, as I say, round the pub, over the garden fence. That's how news got round. So what about chatting to family and friends that perhaps didn't live just down the street, perhaps lived in another town? How did they communicate? Well, if you didn't have a telephone, it was by letter. I remember my mum writing to her mum, my, my grandmother lived up in Surrey. It's a good old distance to travel. So they used to write to each other. They'd write a letter once a week. My mum would write to her mum and then her mum would write back. That was the way to keep up with what was going on. Also, my, my grandmother would come down, say, once a month, something like that. She'd come down on the train. And then you know we'd meet up on a Sunday and she'd stay for Sunday lunch with us. And again, catch up on the news that way. But you just didn't see people that live further afield. I mean, my mum has got sisters or had sisters that lived up in where? Norfolk, uh, down the West Country, um, or way north of London, all over the place. All they could do was write to each other. Even when everyone had a telephone, you didn't want to make too many calls because it wasn't cheap. The telephone back then, it was well, certainly phoning another country. If you had a relation in Australia, for example, you're paying something like a pound, what is it, three pounds, four pounds a minute something incredibly daft over these days. Well, I was going to say it's free on the internet. You obviously have to pay for your internet connection. But you can have a video chat with people all around the world, can't you, for as long as you like. And you just pay your internet, uh, what is it, your service provider. So again, look how things have changed. My son lives in America. We have video chats. He'll say, oh, look at this. I've just done this around the house and I'll show him my highly technical posh recording studio and he laughs. <laughs> But even though he lives, what, 3,000 miles away, we chat all the time, not every day, but a couple of times a week. And we can show each other on video what's happening, show him the tomato plants I'm growing, and he's highly interested in that, of course. <laughs> oh, happy days. So again, the, oh, another news alert. Now what's happened? Eurovision could come to the UK next year. Is that, break, is that news alert? Breaking news. Eurovision could come to the UK. I don't watch Eurovision. I used to watch bits of it years ago, but I can't be bothered with it now. Anyway, that's another issue. So communication. Well, look at that. There we are. There's an example. I just read that on my watch. Up it comes. Because uh, up on my watch, I've got Sky News, uh, BBC News and one or two. Is it G GB News? Stuff like that. Any breaking news, it just comes up on my watch. And I can have a quick read. Doesn't matter where I am whether I'm out in the middle of the, the sticks in the countryside or out on a boat, which I'm not going to be, but if I was out on a boat, I get the news alerts. Fantastic. I know I've said I don't watch the news anymore because I'm fed up with politics, which is true. I don't bother with the news programmes too much, but I do have the alerts on the watch. I almost took that off the other day. We were at the wild flower, wild flower? What am I saying? Wild flat fowl. It's difficult for to, you try saying it. Wild fowl wetlands. Okay, wild flower wetlands trust in Arundel. <laughs> I'm out in the countryside. I'm looking at the wildlife. You know, I don't want news alert. Boris has done this or Keir Starmer's done that. Good grief, stone the crows. As John said, he will get stoned by the crows. <laughs> for his de derogatory comment. No, we won't go into that. Oh, I don't know. But let's go back to the 1950s. Now, not everyone had a phone. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I remember our next door neighbour. Our phone would ring, OK? You answer the phone. Hello? Oh, can I speak to Edith next door? Oh, God, here we go. Edith, who lived next door, didn't have a phone. And what she did, my friend down in Dorset, can I give her your phone number? Then, not all the time, but perhaps once a fortnight, she'll ring. If you come and get me, I can have a chat. So Edith, I'd have to go next door. Uh, Edith, there's a phone call for... Oh, all right, dear, just come in. 
Then she'd be on the phone for half an hour talking to this friend in Dorset. But that's what neighbours did for those that didn't have a phone. And another, here's another thing. Now, this is interesting. A lot of people had a, well, not on every street corner, but there were phone boxes, the red phone boxes, all over the country. Wherever you were living, you were in walking distance of a red phone box. Now, what people did, they said, that's my phone box. <laughs> One just down the road, they call it my phone box. And what they did, they would give people the phone box number. And they'd say, right, phone me. You know, someone had a phone. Say my Auntie Mabel in Dorset's got a phone and she's going to phone me. She'd say, I'll phone you at seven o'clock. I give her the phone number of the box. So at seven o'clock, I'm hanging around the phone box, loitering with intent, <laughs> intent to answer the phone. And then the phone would ring, you know, hello, Auntie Mabel, how are you? Well, what would happen sometimes, and this happened on more than one occasion, here's a good example, the phone, I was walking past the phone box, actually on my way home from school, and the phone was ringing in this phone box. And I looked round, well, no one seems to be about, uh, I went in and answered it. I said, hello. Oh, hello, sorry to trouble you. Number 17, just near the phone box. I know it's just near the phone box. Could you go over there and get Maggie? And I said, uh, uh, OK, yeah, yeah, hang on a minute. So I put the phone down on the side, went over to number 17, which is only like a few yards away, knock on the door. Uh, are you Maggie? There's a phone call in the box. Oh, OK. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks very much. And this woman ran over to the phone box. So that was strange. I remember another time the phone was ringing. I saw this kid come out of the phone box and run off up the street. Didn't think anything of it. As I passed the phone box, the phone rang. So I went in. Hello? Did you just press the emergency button, the 999 button? I said, no, I didn't. I'm just walking past. Yes, you did. I'll have the police on you. It was the operator. What this kid had done, he'd gone in the phone box. There used to be a little white button. You press that and it dials 999, the emergency number. This kid had done that and run off. The operator had called the box to see what the problem was. I'd answered it and got told off. I just hung up and went home. <laughs> But I remember a friend of mine, he answered the phone once. He told me this story. This is uh, school again. And he went, uh, if someone said, oh, you know, can you go to number so-and-so? Sorry to trouble you. And he, he said, yeah, OK, hang on. He went over to this house, tapped on the door. And this big bloke said, what do you want? And he said, there's a phone call for you. What do you mean there's a phone call? And it's, he said, oh, it's Larry or Harry or whoever it was. He had cheeky devil. I don't know anyone by that name. And slammed the door. And he said that this chap was really rude. He went back to the phone box just to say, well, whoever it is here, he doesn't want to speak to you. Of course, they'd hung up. So someone was ringing the phone box and having a laugh. But he was lucky that this big bloke didn't cuff him one round his head. <laughs> As you used to get back in those days. When you're at school in the 50s, if you're naughty and out in the street or on a building site, local policeman would give you a slap round the head. He'd box your ears, as they used to call it. Or box your ears. Even when people started to get telephones, letter writing carried on. There's something about receiving a letter. I remember my grandmother up in Surrey, she'd write to me sometimes. She wrote to my mum regularly, but sometimes I'd get a letter. My mum would say, look, there's a letter for you. Oh, great. I opened it up. Oh, it's from, it's from my nan. Terrific. That was great. And I'd write back. That was good fun. Even when I was young. Um, I don't know how young I was, obviously old enough to write, <laughs> just about, but I was probably about 18, when I was just about able to write. No, but I'd write back to my nan and it, it was great receiving letters. We don't, I don't think we, uh, when was the last letter we got? Now that's interesting. When was the last letter we, or I or Trish received, which was just, hi, it's me. How are you doing? How are you getting on? Bit of news from someone. I can't remember. We get, obviously, all the bills in the brown envelopes. Everyone does. But I honestly can't remember, uh, excluding birthday cards, Christmas cards, just a letter saying, hi, how are you doing? Bit of news or whatever. I can't remember when we last got a, a letter like that. Which is a shame, really, isn't it? I know people email each other. Of course, these days, our... No, well, let's have a look. Um, as I mentioned earlier, middle daughter lives up in... Over the Downs, north of the Downs. We don't see a great deal of her. It's about a 45-minute drive. She pops down now and then. We do go up there now and then, but it's you've got to make a bit of a day out of it, or certainly a morning or an afternoon. Whereas as a local family, youngest daughter, oldest daughter, 
they're local. Yeah, you know, we can almost walk round to see them, and they do walk round to see us. But uh, yeah, with the middle daughter over the downs there, we don't see a great deal of her or the kids. But having said that, we're on. Oh, is it WhatsApp and Facebook and you know Tube Time and Face App and <laughs> all these different things? So there's videos going on. You know, it's great. Uh, another thing, I, I wanted to get rid of our landline telephone because the only people that use it are our mothers, my mother and my mother-in-law, or Trisha's mother and her mother-in-law. <laughs> and I said to my mum, we might get rid of the landline, we might do away with that because we've all got mobile phones. Oh no, I, I don't want to phone mobile. It costs a lot of money to phone a mobile. And Trisha's mum more or less said the same thing. So we've hung on to the landline, or we will hang on to it for a bit longer. I think our, with our media, no, what are they, Virgin Media or whoever supplies it, I don't know. It's not them, it's someone else, but I can't remember who. But whoever does the landline, I think our thing with them runs out in a year or so, contract thing. So when that comes to be replaced, renewed, I think we'll just say, no, forget it, we don't want the landline. Thinking of our family, who has actually got a landline phone that they use, I think it is only us two. None of the daughters, none of the sons, none of the... And no, no one. It's only us and our mums. That's it. Everyone else, they've just got their mobiles. When I was in my teens, talking of letter writing, uh, I was on you know, pirate, pirate radio, not playing music, well, that as well, but chatting to other pirates on shortwave radio. Uh, totally illegal, of course. And I got in touch with this chap in Southampton. And we started writing to each other and then what we did, because a bit of a bore writing a letter, you think, oh, I must mention this, mention that, you get through page after page. So what we did, I worked in the radio and TV workshop and I, I got a little three-inch tape. I had a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and so did he. So I got this little three-inch tape and I'd record my message on that to him. I'd tell him what I'd been up to, what new radio equipment I got hold of, what I was building, chat about aerials and pirate stuff then I would post him the tape. He'd listen to it. Then he would record his message over mine. It was a, what was it, I don't know, about 20 minute message, something like that. And it was really nice to hear his voice and he could hear my voice. He'd send the tape back to me and you know he'd answer any questions I'd had. It was really good. We did that for well, about once a month, I think, the tape went back and forth. As we got older, we sort of, it, I don't know, it drifted. It drifted away. It ended up like once or twice a year and then it stopped. I lost contact with him altogether in the end, which is a great shame. I did go to Southampton and meet him. I bought this huge uh, shortwave transmitter from him and I took it home on the train. He lived, where was it, Bitten? Was it Bitten, somewhere in Southampton? I lugged this thing home on the train. His dad gave me a lift to the station and I lugged this onto the train. <laughs> huge transmitter and then I got a lift back to the other end to my house uh, well, my parents house and what a fantastic transmitter that was high highly powerful thing uh, ex-military oh, fantastic I've no idea what I paid for it probably about three guineas or two pounds 17 and sixpence halfpenny <laughs> something daft but that was great sending each other tapes and I wasn't the only one I remember when cassette tapes came along people would send cassettes to each other, tell them how they're doing. Because, you know, very, very much cheaper than the phone, making a phone call, a lot easier than having to sit there and write page after page of a letter. And also they could hear your voice. I remember hearing this chap's grandchildren. He, I was around his place once. He said, oh, listen to my grandchildren. This was a lot later in life. And on the cassette, there's his grandkids. Hello, granddad, how are you doing? Brilliant. You know, the kids loved it. He loved it. So there we are. That's another form of communication that's now gone, I suppose. Well, it has gone, hasn't it? People don't uh, send each other tapes anymore. I don't suppose anyone's got a tape recorder, have they? Cassette, reel to reel or, or otherwise. I remember when CB radio came along to, uh, to this country. That really took off in a big way because especially youngsters, when I say kids, I mean teenagers, you know, 12 to sort of 16 well and older but the youngsters that were still at school of course they loved it I suppose it was like an equivalent to a, a mobile phone 
you know, suddenly they go home from a school and I'll, I'll meet you on channel 14 or I'll see you on channel 26 at uh, six o'clock. And, you know, they'd have a chat on the radio. Of course, it was jam-packed. It was full of kids and you get people playing music and other people swearing and stuff like that. But it really did take off and it was a fantastic thing, CB radio. It's still going today, not the kids. Well, there are, yes, there are one or two that I hear on there, but mainly it's older people. Quite a few people of my age, you know, retired people, they just have a chat on there. There's a little group of them, they'll have a chat locally and when conditions are right, you know, further afield. The other day I heard someone talking to a chap in Scotland and uh, Northern Ireland, uh, no, where was it? Uh, not Northern Ireland, um, oh, I can't remember, somewhere in Ireland. So yeah, it was great, people having a chat on on CB. That really was a, a good form of communication, all the youngsters in touch with each other. I remember listening to CB radio, a couple of youngsters helping each other with their homework. You know, what about question so-and-so? What's that? Oh, yeah, that's this. And you know, they're just helping each other out with their homework, which, thinking about it, was a terrific thing from an educational point of view, I suppose, helping each other with homework. And a lot of people met. There were CB clubs, a lot of CB clubs all over Britain. Uh, I remember we had two or three locally, and they'd all have their nets on the radio, you know, their sort of networks, and they'd chat. So that was a great form of communication. What took over from that? I don't know, when did mobile phones... Was it mobile phones? No, it was the internet, wasn't it? I think... Oh, you know, I can't remember. I'm, I'm not very good at chronological type. I can't even say it. Chronological. Not very good at chronological things. I remember CB... Well, CB started illegally originally, the old AM sets, as they were called, that were brought into the country from America and wherever else, from Europe. I remember before the illegal am sets even before that i got hold of an american radio and i was just saying hello testing one two testing and this chap said who's that and i said uh, i'm ray who's that and he said i'm gary anyway a bit of a long story we arranged to meet outside a pub in uh, in worthing in the town and i went along and i could see this lad standing there you had to be a bit careful because it was illegal to use the radio without a license and i saw this lad standing there and he went into the pub, so I followed him in, and the chap behind the bar said, hello, Gary, and he said, oh, hello, I'll have a pint of whatever, and you know, I smiled at him, and he said, you must be Ray, I said, yeah, pleased to meet you, and we've known each other, well, he's moved abroad now, but uh, yeah, we knew each other for decades, he went abroad in the end, I don't know why, so we've lost touch, funny, isn't it, all these people come and go, so that was even before the illegal AM CB radios took off in this country, because then it was legalised, then it was full of kids, then all the kids went elsewhere, probably on the internet, and it was just left to the sort of hardcore few, the real radio enthusiasts that didn't have an amateur you know, ham radio licence, but they wanted a chat on the radio. So as I say, it's still going today. How about that? All these decades later, what, 50, 60 years later, stone the crows. And there's another form of communication that hasn't exactly taken off with the general public, but it is used a lot, and that's PMR. Have you heard of PMR 446? PMR is public mobile radio, I think. Is it or private? No, it's public mobile radio. Anyway, it's 446. There are eight, I think there are now 16 channels, and you can buy these toy walkie-talkies. I say toy because they are pretty... Uh, they're, they're quite expensive to buy, but they're pretty cheap things. They're not that good. But you can get more professional little walkie-talkie handheld things. And quite a lot of people use PMR446. I monitor Channel 8 all the time. And you get a few locals around here. Anyone on Channel 8? And the other someone will have a chat with you, which is rather good. The children. <laughs> channel 1 is the children's channel. That's how it's kind of developed. Channel 1 is the children's channel. So if you listen on there, it's normally kids. Where are you? I'm here. I can't see you. Oh, yes, I, is that you behind that tree? Yeah, here I am. All this goes on and they, they start shouting and singing. There was some girl the other day singing on there. She was sounded very young. But that's great for the kids. So they've got their own little walkie-talkies. It's also used, this is a bit daft, it's also used for business. Pubs, shops, things like that. Locally, building sites, crane drivers. You know, they've all got... PMR 446. So you've got one chap on the crane 
is anyway, is being instructed. Yeah, go up a bit more, up a bit more, a bit more. And then you've got kids on there saying, oh, I can't find you. Where are you? <laughs> so it can be a bit of a mess sometimes. It wasn't originally for children and the kids. It was more a business or just public, general public. It was for shops and businesses. I mean, I listened sometimes on there on various, was it Channel 5, I think, local to me. There's a, a restaurant somewhere in town. Uh, and they'll say, oh, there's so-and-so to table five, and have we got any more scrambled egg? No, <laughs> not a scrambled egg, but, you know, whatever it is they do, I don't know. So that can be quite good fun. There's also the motorbike instructors. You'll get the instructor at the front, and then half a dozen people on motorbikes behind that are learning, you know, rules of the road and how to ride your bike safely. And the one up the front is just talking to the rest. So at this next roundabout, we're going to turn left. So indicate left, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, that, that could be, uh, I was going to say interesting. That can be very boring. But uh, there's all sorts on PMR446, which again is, you know, it's good fun. It's great fun for the kids. I remember in the 50s as a kid watching, a late 50s, yeah, late 50s, early 60s, watching an American programme on T TV. You know, Lassie, do you remember Lassie? That must have been late 50s, 60s. And the kids on there would have walkie-talkies, you know, big aerials, and they're, they're chatting to each other on the radio. And I used to look and think, oh, yeah, I want that. I wish I had a radio, I wish I had a walkie-talkie. And then, of course, in Australia, I heard that they didn't go to school. The kids that lived in the in the bush, was it, the outback, they didn't go to school. They, they went to school on the radio. They didn't physically go to school. They would sit in their room with a, a radio, a you know, two-way radio which is great. You can sit there reading a comic while the teacher's going blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> I don't suppose they got away with that too much, but the teacher couldn't see what you were doing. You could stay in bed. They didn't get out of bed in the morning. So, yeah, I remember hearing about that and thinking, oh, imagine, imagine if I had a two-way radio in my room. I don't have to go to school. I just listen to the teacher on the radio. Yeah, obviously, they talked to the teacher as well. They had the, you know, the microphone, so it was a two-way thing. But uh, fantastic. Just sit there in your own bedroom while the teacher droned on <laughs> trying to teach you something. I bet that was a laugh. Because go back even further before, well, before TV, before radio. Well, when did radio come out? 1920-something? Oh, I can't remember. No, it was earlier. When the majority of people didn't even have a radio, say the 20s, 30s, I don't know. Radios were expensive. All they had was newspaper. You buy your local newspaper... And a lot of people couldn't afford a newspaper. A lot of people couldn't read if you go back further. So they relied on other people telling them what was in the newspaper. If they could read, they would you know, find a newspaper discarded in the street or a neighbour. I remember neighbours giving each other newspapers. Oh, I finished with the Daily Mirror. Do you want the, the Sun? Or have you got the Daily Mail? Yep, it's the Telegraph. And they'd swap papers. You know, why go and buy a load of different papers, especially the Sunday papers, because they were quite quite expensive. So the neighbours would all have a, a read and then swap newspapers. So that was good. Good way of getting a load of news. Was news all biased as, back then as it is now? I don't know. Probably. I don't know. It's, that's a, a different, again, that's a different subject altogether, isn't it? All this bias and stuff. So, yes, that's how news has, has developed it must have been fantastic when cinemas started opening and showing the newsreels from around the world. That must have been fantastic. Go down to your local cinema and you see what's happening in South America, Africa, Australia, all around the, you know, Asia, everywhere. All this news coming in that you actually sit there and watch. Here we go. Talk of news coming in. What we got now? Oh, another heat wave alert. Do you know, I'm quite cool in my <laughs> air-conditioned studio. It's air-conditioned because I've opened the window. <laughs> Happy days. You've got to laugh, haven't you? You've got to laugh. I did have an air-con machine in my workshop before I retired. The trouble is, it was a big thing. That wasn't the problem. The trouble is, it was noisy. It would you know, churn away in the corner of the workshop, and it was noisy. Very efficient. I mean, it worked. You know, it would cool the workshop down within half an hour or so. I'd go in there in the morning. It would cool it right down. Beautiful. But of course, again, here in the UK, in Britain here, we don't get months and months of summer, of heat wave type weather. 
we get a few days, <laughs> if you're lucky, two weeks. So in the end, I gave it away. I gave it to middle daughter over the downs there. And she's, uh, what did they do? They put it in their gym. They turn their garage into a gym and they put it in there. Because as you can imagine, it gets a bit hot leaping around doing all these exercises. I wouldn't know because I've never leapt around doing exercises. But it must be quite hot, strenuous work. Talking of exercises, I've been trying to do a bit more walking. But uh, my knee, I don't know what's happened to it. I've totally wrecked my knee. I twisted it, getting some shopping out of the back of the car. Twisted it. I could barely walk for two days. And that was, what, two weeks ago? Over two weeks ago, I think. And it's just getting worse. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's awful. So I can't really exercise. I have been doing quite a bit, though, physically. I've been putting some sealer stuff, you know, that mastic stuff you put round window frames and that, round the, the porch door that we had put in. It's funny, isn't it? They put the porch door in, and all it wanted to finish it off nicely was either side a little bit of plastic trim. So uh, the chap said to me, oh, we're not allowed to do that. And he, not allowed? What are you on about? Anyway, I've done it myself. And another bit I've got to do above the lounge window downstairs. Years ago, when we had the double glazing put in, I said, well, you haven't gone along the top. You haven't covered that bit of wood there. Oh, no, no, we're not allowed to do that. It'll make the wood sweat. Make the wood sweat? What are you talking about? They do come out with some rubbish, these people, don't they? And I've also been doing a little bit of painting. Obviously, we've got double glazing. I mean, these days, you don't paint houses, do you? We do in America, don't you? Because they're, they're, a lot of them are wood, aren't they? Or wood outside, wood cladding. So I suppose you have to paint all the woodwork. But we've got a, here, we've got a lintel, a lintel over the front door and over the window above the front door. And they're both painted white. So I bought some, was it Santex? Hugely expensive masonry paint. What was it nearly 30 quid or something for five litres? I only wanted one litre. That's all I need. But no, no, you can't have that. You've got to buy five litres. <laughs> oh dear. I wonder what that is in pints. Talking of drinks, well, we weren't talking of drinks, but pints. We might go up our local club later on, on a Friday, which it is today, on a Friday afternoon, about four or five o'clock. We wander up there and just have a couple of drinks each. It's, it's quite nice it's to keep the club going because of uh, lockdown. I mean, they were closed, basically. The club was closed for 18 months, was it, or more? So we like to show our faces up there at least once a week. It's only five minutes walk, literally around the corner. So I shall walk up there in my shorts <laughs> and scare everyone, frighten everyone. So we're going to do that a bit later. But I think what I'll do now is make a cup of tea. Isn't the, the sky funny? In the UK, when it's really, really hot, like a heat wave hot, the sky isn't as blue as it sometimes can be. It's a kind of hazy blue. I don't know, it's strange. And you can tell it's getting even hotter. At the moment, I've just checked under our patio roof, it's 28. So it's going, where are we? What, what's the time? Oh, I don't know. Can't, oh, the clock stopped. What's the point of having a clock that's stopped? Hang on, I've got a watch here, haven't I? Oh, here we are. Look, it's one o'clock. Just coming up to one o'clock. I forget what I was saying now. Something about the sky being blue. There is a bit of a breeze uh, coming from the west. I can see the flag. Oh, friend of mine. He popped round with his wife the other day. She makes me rock cakes. I don't know why, but she makes me rock cakes. They're really nice. So they drop these cakes off. Oh, and a radio, a little transistor radio, a Robert's radio from the 80s, was it? He didn't want it anymore, so he gave that to me. Anyway, he saw the flag and he said, oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. How much was that? Where'd you get that from? So I told him all about it. This was, what, a few days, a week ago. Spoke to him on the radio this morning. I've ordered a flag. He said, I've ordered a flag. I'm hoping it will turn up in a day or two. So that's good. He likes the flag. It's only £50. And for that, you get the flag, you get the, the pole, obviously, the rope, the base thing that you concrete into the ground, the whole setup for 50 quid. It's, um, what do they call it, powdered aluminium or something. It's really nice. All the neighbours love it. And uh, as I've said before, it holds up one end of my aerial, one end of uh, the bit of wire. One end of the bit of wire goes to the flagpole, the top of it. I was just thinking back to communication, chatting over the garden fence. Funnily enough, I went out the front this morning. What was it? Seven, seven o'clock. Went out there. I was putting the flag up and a lady across the road was walking her dog. So I had a chat with her. After that, I popped out there. We've got a dog bowl. I call it a fox bowl. It's a bowl of water 
which is out there for squirrels, hedgehogs, dogs, foxes, whatever. In this sort of weather, they do need a drink. I was filling that up and one of the other neighbours popped out. Oh, hello, how you doing? <laughs> How's your Bert's lumbago? Oh, mustn't grumble. So there you are, we're having a chat. It's quite good, actually. I, I like having a, a chat with the neighbours. We all get on well here, as I've said before. And you can keep up with the local news and gossip, whatever's going on. So that's nice. So yes, even today, although it's not over, I mean, garden fences these days are, what, six feet high, aren't they? What's that? Roughly two metres, for those who don't know what six feet is. <laughs> so, yeah, you can't really chat over the fence. You, know, you can shout through it, I suppose. But it is still going on, you know, the neighbourly chat you meet in the street. Have you heard this? Have you heard about so-and-so? <laughs> oh, dear. It's all good fun, isn't it? It's all good, clean fun. I like it. Right, it is time now, I think, for a cup of tea. Don't forget to email me if you've got anything to say. Uh, if it's just you know, rubbish or interesting or boring or moaning or complaining, whatever, love to hear from you. Raise rants at protonmail.com. Raise rants at protonmail.com. I like going through all the emails each day. It's quite good. Wake up and first thing I do, grab the iPad and see what people have got to say. <laughs> Some are quite funny. Some are not so funny. No, it's good. It's good fun reading them all. I don't, as I've said before, I don't mention all emails because it would just take too long. But uh, the odd one or two. I've got one here. Where, where is it? Hang on, let me just find this one. I meant to mention it earlier. Hang on a second. Oh, here we are. It's from Betty somewhere in uh, in the UK. Hello, Betty. She says, uh, politicians or their agents or whatever knocking on doors. Do you have that? I don't. Probably something to do with a huge notice I've got outside that says, if you're anything to do with politics, clear off. No, I haven't really, but I'd like to. No, we don't have, funnily enough, we don't have people knocking on the door. But uh, Betty says they go around to her place. They do a lot all over the country. And they'll say, oh, you know, can we uh, can we look forward to your vote? And she says, oh, yeah, yes, of course. Oh, yeah, conservative. I always vote conservative. Next lot come round. Can we look forward to your vote? I always vote Labour. Of course you've got my vote. And it goes on. Lib Dems, yeah, of course you've got my vote. I never vote for anyone else. And she says that way it just gets rid of them, which is great. It's a, gr <laughs> She says it's a great thing to do, just lie to them. I, I think I've told you before with people that knock on the door. You get a chap knock on the door, just looking at your roof. I can fix that for you. You've got a loose tile up there. Do you want me to nip up and fix it? It'll only cost you 500 quid. I just say, sorry, it's a rented house. Oh, oh OK, off they go. That's it, they don't want to know. Double glazing. Your double glazing needs replacing. I just say, oh, I know it does. I know. It's awful. Look at it, all this here. It all wants replacing. Oh, oh, good, they say. Can I put you down for a quote? Uh, well, you'll have to see the landlord. He lives in Spain. I don't know how you're going to contact him. I haven't heard from him for years. Off they go, not interested. It really does work. You need a new driveway. Your drive's cracking up. We can lay you a nice new drive. I'd love that. If only the landlord would allow it. <laughs> it works every time. Oh, I love it. Another news alert. UK records 50 new monkeypox cases, taking the total to 574. Good grief. I mean, is that... It's getting worse, isn't it? We had the, uh, the COVID business, the pandemic. Now we've got this monkeypox coming from somewhere. I keep getting these alerts at, uh, about monkeypox. I haven't taken much notice so far, but what's that? Oh, it's the same alert. One from Sky, one from BBC. So I don't know. It is it is useful having news flashes. I know I say, oh, I don't follow the politics and the news anymore. But other news flashes, it is useful. We've got a train strike. When's that? Now, let me get this right. I can't remember. Next week. Is it Tuesday I think three days next week, the railways are on strike, so it doesn't affect me. But a lot of people, of course, want to get to work uh, and they won't be able to. So that's not good. And who else was it talking about going on strike? I don't know, there was someone else. Some other lot uh, were saying that they're going to go on strike. Or was it more, more train drivers? Not drivers, staff, I don't know. I don't know. But I do like these alerts, it's quite handy. I get a, a, um, an air alert air pollution, air quality. My doctor years ago, she said, you've got COPD from smoking for years. And I said, no, I haven't. You know, they do talk rubbish. She said, you have. Anyway, I didn't argue. I just said, all right, OK, you're right. I'm wrong. You win. <laughs> I haven't. 
she did say I was on the cusp. It was, it's almost, it's mild on the cusp, COPD, which is something, coronary lung disease or something. And she said, on your mobile phone, do this app, get this app, which I've done, and it's got air quality and pollen and stuff like that. And it's quite useful. It, uh, every now and then on my watch, it says what the pollen levels are. There's tree pollen and things. I didn't know there was tree pollen, obviously from flowers, but there's grass pollen and tree pollen. And what I've been doing, I, I, why am I telling you this? Well, it's just out in case you have you know, hay, hay fever. I've never had hay fever in my life, but I do get this one eye waters a lot and gets itchy and stingy. And I reckon it's hay fever. And I've been taking a, what is it, an antihistamine. Is it histamine? Actually, I, the other day, I, I said, I was telling someone, I said, I, I've got some antihysterectomies. And this, it was a friend of Trisha's and she looked at me, antihysterectomies? I said, well, yeah, hay fever. Oh, <laughs> antihistamines. Yeah, I, I don't know, slip of the tongue. <laughs> Dear me, antihysterectomines. And, no, whatever they are. And they do work. So if you've got hay fever, just take one of those a day. They're only tiny little things. Just take one of those a day. And it does help. It certainly does help. But I've never had hay fever until now. All my life, my, my sister, when we were young, she used to suffer terribly from hay fever. As soon as the sun came out, that's it. Eyes streaming and all this stuff. Awful. Oh, I've got another note here. Update on the tadpoles. We've got uh, Jenny, uh, Nora, Susan and uh, Ruby. Uh, all, all female. That's funny, isn't it? All interested in ponds, uh, frogs, tadpoles, that sort of thing. The tadpole count is going down. I think that's because Mr Blackbird likes eating them, <laughs> which isn't good. I tried to keep him away. I've made a bit of a barrier on the edge of the pond that he can get to. But we do have some left and they are getting fatter. No legs as yet, but they are getting fatter. Yeah, who's it? Ruby. Uh, they've got newts. Uh, I mentioned newts the other day. My sister in her pond has got newts. Uh, that's good. Uh, we've got uh, freshwater shrimps. This, this is for the pond lovers. I'll just mention all this. Uh, what else have we got? Water boatmen. We have got uh, one or two large frogs. And there's a toad that hangs around somewhere. One or two large frogs, but we don't see a lot of them. Every now and then you see them with their heads poking out of the water. Or they'll be in the undergrowth bit near the pond where it's damp. We've got bits of wood, logs and rotting wood and stuff like that. They like it. In fact, in there, we've put a load of stag beetles. Uh, a couple of the neighbours were moving uh, old sheds, things like that, years ago. What, two, three years ago? And they kept bringing over stag beetles because we've got a special place for them. And we already had a couple. So we haven't seen any, but they do stay hidden for up to seven years. They go underground or wherever they go for up to seven years and then they come out. I've probably got that totally wrong and no doubt you'll all email me to tell me so. But uh, interesting though anyway. I'm just waiting to actually see some little tadpoles with legs which will be good. I still haven't made my tea. I think I'll do that now. So shall we end it here? Nothing else here. What have I got written down here? Nothing. I've crossed everything off. So I shall now go outside and see what the temperature is doing and perhaps sit in the shade. I've got a nice little spot at the end of the garden. I built this uh, pergola. Some people call them, what is it? I say pergola, a uh, pergola or something. Is it pergola? It's a wooden frame, basically, and over the top of it we've got growing uh, Boston ivy and honeysuckle. We did have clematis. It all died, kind of overnight, miraculously disappeared, all dead. So that was that. But it's lovely down there, and the tortoise likes it there. I go and sit down there with him, and we have a chat. <laughs> well, I have a chat. I don't think he even listens, because tortoises don't have ears, do they? Anyway, love talking to you, as always. I always enjoy it. Hope you enjoy listening as much as I enjoy droning on. <laughs> Take care. Look after yourselves. If you are anywhere hot, uh, like we are at the moment, make sure you drink plenty of fluids. I don't mean beer. <laughs> well, you can have beer, but you must have proper fluids. Uh, alcohol is, a, it, what is it called? It dehydrates you, doesn't it? What's it called? Not a fire hydrant, a dehydrant. It de, it de oh, you know what I mean. Have plenty of water or something like that. And don't get too hot. Take care. Look after yourselves. See you on Wednesday for the midweek message. Bye bye for now.